Uh, okay, I want to do a, a, a quick thing. I read uh, two other articles, and I, I contemplated this morning whether I wanted to include them in um, in this or not. But you know, uh, I, I've I've said this before. I've made these arguments before, and that's why I kept going back and forth. And I was like, eh, you know, I don't do I do I need to keep saying it, or am I beating beating a dead horse? Uh, is that a phrase? Is that the phrase for the? Okay. Anyway, but you guys get you guys understand what I'm saying. It's like am I over over making this statement? Um, and and really, it, Caitlin Johnstone wrote a, a really good piece um, about uh, about why getting rid of Trump uh, won't save us. Like it, it's, it, getting rid of Trump is not a positive thing, um, the, and it's sort of veering into the any blue will do argument. Right, and then there's another article that I read by the uh, Black Agenda Report um, about um, not chastising third parties because, you know, for what it's worth, we do need third parties. We do need third parties. Right. Uh, so I wanted to kind of address that, um, and I know I've talked about this before, because here's the thing: the any blue will do argument really, really boils down to. Let's go back to the status quo. And and this is the argument that Caitlin Johnstone makes. This is the argument that I've made time and time again is, you know, that's all fine and dandy, but status quo wasn't great. In fact, status quo is what got us to Trump. So why would we just take a step backward? And I get it. I understand. But part of it is, Going back to the status quo means a lot of people uh, go go back to not having to care. And look, some of us have not had that luxury. Uh, we, some of us have not had the luxury of not caring about big issues, not caring about these things. Um, you know, my whole life has been uh, pretty much politicized. Uh, from from the moment that I got here. I faced uh, racial discrimination, which is a huge problem in this country, institutionalized. And, and you know, the more you learn about it, the more you grow up in it, the more you realize that it's institutionalized racism, and it's existing everywhere. Um, and then I had to deal with problems with immigration because I was entrenched my entire life, the entire fucking time that I've been in this country, in the immigration system. It's it's uh, it's low points its high points, all its problems, all its gaps, all its loopholes. I've been entrenched in it. I've virtually seen every process. I've seen the visa process. I've seen the dependent process. I've seen the green card process. And now I've also seen the citizenship process. And just because I have my citizenship now doesn't change a goddamn thing. Because guess what? The, the fucking Patriot Act and everything that happened after 9-11 essentially proved to me that xenophobia d- doesn't give a shit about... Y- what 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 border you have said you belong to on a fucking piece of paper? It doesn't it doesn't care about that. It, it they look at the color of my skin and associate it with um, with with uh, with terrorism and, and evil and all this other shit, right? So my whole life has been politicized. I've had to be on the pulse of all of this shit all the time. And me being who I am as a pretty naturally curious person. Um, I've al- I've always been interested in this sort of stuff. I've always been interested in the in the large scale ideas, in talking about philosophy and history, and um, you know politics and religion, and getting to know a perspective and understanding how people think. You know, sociology and human behavior. All of this stuff has been constantly on my mind. It's and and it you know I, I think this should go without saying is it is constantly on my mind. I think about this sort of stuff all the time. I'm constantly entrenched in it. That's kind of how I operate my life. And a lot of people didn't do that. A lot of people only became privy to uh, the large-scale problems that we see within the American political landscape until Trump got it, especially when Trump got it. Um, even when Bush got in, they were like, well, he's a, he, eh, whatever, eh, eh, you know, they kind of waved it off. And 
and again that was that was just falling into the line of complacency where I don't have to think about it because I don't have to worry about it well some of us have always had to worry about it and some people saw other people constantly having to worry about it and go you know what that's fucked up and we I don't want they jumped into the fight now I'm not shaming anybody for being being falling into the trap of of complacency and, and being like oh well Obama's here racism is over you know, I've had many arguments with those people in the past, and, and now it's like, well, maybe it wasn't, and now here we are, and now I say welcome to the party. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the fight. It's going to be, it, we're, we're going to be fighting for a while. There's a lot to, a lot of work to be done. But, you know, this notion that when Mayor Pete comes into office, if, if Mayor Pete comes into office, if Klobuchar or Biden or Warren are elected, um, that everything will go back to being hunky-dory and fine is just not true. That's putting us back into the status quo, and the status quo fucking sucked. We were still invading countries that we didn't need to invade. We were still putting economic sanctions and fucking over the middle class on a global level at this point. We are still expanding the military. We were still fucking over the middle class. We were still not taking care of each other. And that's the status quo. And going back to that is only going to reignite the same struggles that we had, you know, 20 years ago. So why would we do that? Don't we want to try to head in a better direction? I'm not defending Trump. This is not a defense of Trump. I don't like the guy. I don't, I, I don't agree with him. I, I wouldn't have fucking agree with him to start. I, a lot of the shit that he does, uh, you know, it's all, it's all ego-driven bullshit. But so are, so are the Democrats. The Democrats are doing a bunch of shit that's all ego-driven. That doesn't really care about the, the actual middle class in America. The thing that we need is to move forward with progressive ideals and talk to people and say, hey, look... I know Medicare for All scares you because you think that it's socialism or, or whatever it is, but it's not. Wouldn't it be nice to live in a world where you don't have to worry about getting sick? That if you did get sick, that you don't have to worry about those medical bills. Well, we have somebody that can do that. We have several people that are actually talking about getting us on that plan. Bernie, Tulsi, Andrew Yang had some ideas. What if we went in that direction instead? So, I think even status quo would would be worse in the sense that I think with how polarized things have become and how polarizing the status quo, the members of the status quo are, because they're all elites that can't take responsibility for themselves and never have and never will. And again, not that Trump isn't. Trump is also kind of part of it. He's a symptom of this. Um, why replace the symptom with another symptom? Because the symptom the, that the, the, the replacement symptom is gay. The replacement symptom is a woman. The replacement system is Joe Biden, who knows Barack Obama. Point of complacency. Why would you want that? What we also need to do is get away from this polarizing, this polarization. Uh, we need to get away from um, this binary viewpoint that we have uh, been stuck in in this country, right? I think we've been stuck in a very, in a very, very binary viewpoint that uh, has kind of wrecked us a little bit and, and that's where the, the second article I read really comes into play which is stop chastising people that voted third party those people were not going to vote for Hillary Clinton stop it or voted Republican stop it those votes don't belong to her she's acting like they are everything that she does she's acting like they fucking belong to her and you and, and and you know oh the people that voted third party took something away from me no they did that's not how democracy works they did not want to fucking vote for Hillary Clinton and 
that is within their goddamn right to not vote for Hillary Clinton. Lesser of two evils still means you're voting for evil. How about we stop voting for evil? How about we make that? How about we make that into a catchphrase? Stop voting for evil. And we're seeing that now, right? Like 47% Nevada for Bernie Sanders. That's a big fucking deal. It's a big fucking deal. That means we're start, we're getting to that point where we're not voting for evil as much. Um, we need a third party. I just wish the Green Party was a little bit more organized. There are certain factions that are that I've 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 met certain you know Green Party areas that are a little bit more organized than others. I wish more libertarians. Would, you know we we, we saw more um, uh, less theatrical presentations of libertarians. With less smears on the Green Party, uh, more push for understanding what the Democratic Socialists of America are, um, and none of that is going to come if we remain to be this polarized country where you are itching to go back to the status quo where Republicans and Democrats don't talk to each other, and it's and it's all a binary. It's all one or the other. We're not binaries. Think about your own beliefs. Do you line up with one side or the other? You probably don't. Most of this country is independence. That's where individualism comes in. To have your thoughts and beliefs. To be who you truly are. That's what the hypocrisy of America is. We we, we really fucking push and crave this hyper-individualism and then say, hey, but fall in line, though. You can be individualistic. You can be who you are as long as we tell you who that is. No, be who you are. Think, think what you want to think. Sit down and have a conversation with somebody and go, well, this is the way that I think. This is the way that I've looked at the world. And part of it is based on, you know, all the things that I went through. Tell me what you went through. We're not going to do that if we remain in this polarized binary bullshit world where you can't talk to somebody that has a difference of opinion than you. We're not going to get there. So stop thinking that getting Trump out of office is going to mean that the fight is over because it's not. Even if Bernie gets into office, the fight's not going to be over. We still have work to do. Undoing stuff doesn't just happen. We're not Thanos with the Infinity Gauntlet here. Bernie Sanders is not the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry to say that if that's like a big surprise to some people. But, you know, when, when he gets into office, it's going to be up to all of us to keep backing him. To keep voting for representatives and Congress people that line up with what we believe in rather than centrists who are like, well, I'm a Democrat, so you should vote for me. Democrats are good. Remember how we're good? No, that's not how it works. Vote for people that but that, that you believe in, that share your belief system. That's what we need to be doing a lot more of. Trump leaving office is not going to fix everything. It's not, it's not going to put everything back to a point where we have to stop fighting. Mm-hmm. Where we need to go is understanding where these third parties are coming from. Stop thinking about things in a binary view. That's where we need to go. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thank you guys for checking out that video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up uh, and uh, hit that share button. Share it out to uh, a friend. Share it out to an enemy. Share it out to anybody you think would enjoy content like this. Uh, Content like this doesn't get uh, often get shown to a lot of people because it's controversial material. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it, I really depend on, on people liking and sharing it, uh, it with friends, with groups, with people that are going to appreciate something like this or get something new out of this. And, and please make sure that you are uh, liked and subscribed to my page, to my channel, um, because sometimes they, uh, uh, they, they remove people. Uh, or, they, or they just don't show it to people that are even subscribed. So just double check to make sure that you are. Uh, and uh, uh, I have live stand-up comedy dates. Uh, if you like the content that I put out, the videos that I'm putting out, 
Uh, I talk a lot about the sub- similar subject matters in my live stand-up comedy show, a lot about organized religion, uh, historical anecdotes, competition, late-stage capitalism, stuff like that. So uh, worker rights, uh, you know, d- taking Jeff Bezos down a couple pegs. Uh, and uh, if you want to come see me perform live stand-up comedy, uh, I am going to be in uh, Houston, Texas, New Orleans, Louisiana, Biloxi, Mississippi, Memphis, Tennessee, St. Louis, Missouri, Des Moines, Iowa. We just added Des Moines, Iowa to this tour. Uh, Moline, Illinois, Chicago, Illinois, Indianapolis, Indiana, and much, much more. Uh, I'm going to be touring uh, all over the country, including uh, doing dates with my good friend Lee Camp, who has released his brand new book and is doing a book release and stand-up comedy tour that I have uh, the honor and privilege of opening uh, up for. Uh, so go uh, go 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 check out Lee Lee's tour schedule as well because I'll be on tour with him. Uh, we're coming to uh, Flagstaff, Arizona, Tucson, Arizona. Asheville, North Carolina, Greensboro, North Carolina, Atlanta. We're going all over the place. Uh, dates are available on my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Grab your tickets, RSVP to these events. Come hang out with us. Uh, and uh, you can also become a patron uh, over at patreon.com slash Haha. That helps the quality and quantity of these videos and helps me put out more content more regularly, helps me uh, be on tour uh, more concisely, uh, more uh, uh, more smartly. Smartly, is that a word? I don't know if that is, but it, it, it helps me get out uh, on the road a lot more and hit different parts of the, the, the country that I don't uh, regularly get to hit. So uh, I can build I can build tours uh, smarter and, and uh, better than I am now, and, and I and, and, and I, I appreciate all the people that have already become uh, patrons. Um, and uh, another way you can become a sustaining member is via Bandcamp by becoming a uh, a subscriber and a follower on Bandcamp, which gets you uh, collections of stand up unreleased to the public, which includes storytelling shows, which includes shows where I you know, riffed a bunch of material, uh, sh- with uh, uh, you know, collections with material that never made it on an album, early versions of uh, my, my shows, fringe festival versions of my shows uh, that can be slightly different than the final cut uh, of uh, all the material that I put out. And you can also contribute directly on my website. So if you follow this video on my website, if that's where you watch this video, you can, you'll probably see a little orange button. Uh, and if you click that, you can become a sustaining member directly on my website. Once again, that's ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really, really appreciate you guys watching. I really, really appreciate everybody that subscribed. I really appreciate all the people that are sharing these videos. Um, get getting the word out about them, coming to the live stand-up comedy shows, uh, and hanging out and getting weird and esoteric after the shows. I really appreciate you guys a whole lot. It means a whole bunch is to me uh, that you guys are, are, are supportive of what I'm doing. Uh, but till the next video, uh, we'll see you on the road. Bye, guys.